Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about using ChatGPT and AI in terms of helping you with Eurovision because I mean, sure, you can make it write essays for you and things like that, but there's a few things you can do with it that can really help making your whole revision process a lot more efficient and should overall just help you with managing your revision time and how you get everything done. I'm not going to talk about the generic things like, oh yeah, make a timetable with ChatGPT. I think we all know that already, but I will go over five main things that I found ChatGPT to be really useful for and things that I've used myself. So yeah, the first thing I want to talk about is creating knowledge organizers. If you don't know what knowledge organizers are, they're basically when you get a new topic, when you start a new topic or you're reviewing a topic, knowledge organizers help organize everything in that topic. So it helps list out everything that is in that topic that you need to go over. So for example, you can ask ChatGPT to create a knowledge organizer for you for a topic sales, let's assume, and it will give every single thing that's in that topic. And so it can help you to begin your revision for that topic or when you start covering a new topic to start with that knowledge organizer and from there be able to work towards the details of each topic. Now, in my opinion, one of the most useful ways of using ChatGPT for your revision is through Active Recall and specifically asking it to quiz you and mark your own answers. It's so, so useful when it comes to this. So let's assume you've gone over a topic. So if we go back to our sales example, let's assume you've already gone over sales and you just want to make sure that you know exactly everything there is in that topic. So you can ask ChatGPT to ask you questions, whether you want them in a multiple choice format or simply just to be asking you open-ended questions and ask ChatGPT to mark your answers when you give them and to develop those answers and generate more information and delve a bit deeper into those topics. I actually did this myself with my interview revision. So when I was preparing for my interviews, I was going over different topics, right? And I would make ChatGPT become the role of an interviewer and ask me interview style questions. And then for me to give my response and for ChatGPT to give me an analysis of that response and let me know what I've missed, what I've done well. And and to add on to anything that I might have missed myself and then ask me follow up questions going into deeper details of that existing question to the point where I might start going out of specification and start learning things that aren't exactly things I should know already, but things that can help me be able to link the different concepts together, if that makes sense. So it's basically the equivalent of having a friend test you on a topic before an exam. But in this case, it's ChatGPT, And so it can sift through lots and lots of information to mark your answers and everything. So so it's a really good way of being able to quickly just recall any bits of facts and information just to see if you know a topic really well or not after your revision. Now adding on to that aspect of delving deeper into certain topics, one thing ChatGPT is really useful for is when you are going over these new topics and things and you're reviewing these topics, you can start filling in gaps from things that you might not necessarily know because as you go through a topic, if there's anything you want to know why, for example, you can just ask ChatGPT and it will give your response and if you just continue doing that as you go through a topic it can make sure that you've got no misconceptions of that topic because as you're going through you're actively asking why and you're getting a response whereas if you're just simply watching a video if they go over a topic and say something that might not necessarily make sense you can't just ask them oh can you explain this so in this case ChatGPT can also become the role of a teacher so if you do want to learn a topic you can ask ChatGPT to teach that to you and to do it in a way where it gives you information one by one and then then asks you if you understand if you want any clarifications and to go over everything nice and slowly rather than going over just one document where you've got all the notes and everything but you can't really ask why for anything that you might be a bit confused about in this case you can just simply copy and paste it into chat gpt and be like oh why is this the case that it is and get a response for it so chat gpt is also very useful in filling in gaps of knowledge and being able to link topics together and get details in a topic that you might not necessarily just get from reading notes or from watching a video or something like that. Sometimes you might have a block of notes and you want to make flashcards for them, but you just don't have the time to sit through and be able to make one by one each flashcard for everything. So instead, you can simply just ask ChatGPT to generate a list of flashcards for you. And so this way you can get a list of front and back for every flashcard, get the question answer for each of them, and then just put that straight into whatever software you use for your flashcards. And obviously it might not necessarily be 100% correct, but it can make everything so much more efficient. So you can start with using ChatGPT ChatGPT to make a rough list of flashcards and then maybe add a few more or remove a few depending on what else you might need to include or what things that you already know if you're very familiar with them. So in this case, I think it's really important to use ChatGPT as a source of making everything a bit more efficient and a bit more seamless, but not making sure that ChatGPT is your only source of revision and only using ChatGPT to make your flashcards, making sure there is that human input still. But I think the most important way of using
using AI in this case is to have a combination of AI and your own human input. So whenever you're doing anything like this, you can start with the AI to give you a sort of outline of everything, just like I talked about with the knowledge organizers earlier on in this video. And then you can start adding things that you think might also need to be added. And so at the end, you've saved yourself a lot of time, but you still got just as high, if not a higher quality form of flashcards or notes or whatever you're trying to get ChatGPT to make for you. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is in terms of topics and being familiar with how comfortable you are with every topic. So this is something I like doing a lot, especially when I'm heading closer towards an exam. I like to have a list of all the topics and being able to rank them in terms of how comfortable I feel with them and how likely I am to do well in those topics. So one thing I found really useful you can do with ChatGPT is to put that list of topics into the software and then ask ChatGPT to give you one by one each topic and for you to rate it out of 10, for example. Or what you can do, give it this list of topics and then you can ask ChatGPT to pick two random ones each time and ask you to say which ones you're more comfortable with. So you're basically putting each one against each other and choosing which one you're most comfortable with until you've gone over every single topic. And then ChatGPT can generate a list depending on how you've ranked each and every topic. And that way you can kind of see exactly what topics you need to go over more with and what topics you think you're more comfortable with. And this is so much easier than writing everything down, moving it around and everything, because you're just letting ChatGPT do do all that work for you and you still get that same benefit at the end. So what I recommend doing is having that list of topics and if you want to rank them in terms of out of 10 or whatever and then over time as you continue your revision to update ChatGPT and let ChatGPT know what topics that you've changed your like level of comfortability in I guess and so the whole thing is very fluid and you can always be changing the rankings of every topic to the point where you're always trying to push those bottom couple topics up to the top and just doing that in like this cycle where you're constantly improving on those weaker topics to the point where all your topics end up being very strong topics and once you go into your exam you know that you've covered every topic and it's a really easy way to make sure that you've actually gone over everything and you haven't missed anything out. And yeah so those are my five main things that I recommend using ChatGPT for. If you have any other things that you think are really useful to use with ChatGPT let me know down below in the comments and hopefully you can help other people as well when you share that. The most important thing is using ChatGPT as a source of making everything more efficient rather than using ChatGPT as your source of revision. So it's more about speeding up the process and still getting the same results at the end. And so that's why it's really, really useful rather than going online to spend hours making a revision timetable or something. The fact that ChatGPT can do it in seconds makes it so much easier to just quickly use ChatGPT to get that revision timetable or the flashcards or whatever. And then the most important part is actually using those and actually sticking to those. That's the part that you actually need to do. So if you save yourself time by using ChatGPT to make all these small little things a bit more quicker and more efficient, then at the end of the day, you're spending more time towards your revision, or at least you're being more efficient in terms of how you're revising. And so that's why I really, really recommend doing these tips. But yeah, that's the end of the video. So if you enjoyed that, if you found it useful, make sure you click the like button down below and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye for now.